So what is the main premise of this new book of yours? Well, the book is called The Reformation as Renewal, and that's key. I think, well, there are mountains of books that have been published on the Reformation, isn't there? Um, but uh, my book adds to the, the conversation in a very different way. Uh, yes, it's a history of the Reformation. Uh, it's one that is more theologically minded, maybe, than, than some others. Uh, it tells the story of, this, of the Reformation. But in order to tell that story, I, I've often found that Protestants, uh, they're used to a certain narrative. And uh, sometimes these narratives give the wrong impression as if uh, the Reformation uh, is something new, uh, something quite radic radically new than before. Uh, but actually, when you listen to the Reformers themselves, what do you discover? You discover a very different narrative. Uh, they would have been shocked by that statement. They, they would have been really uh, disturbed by it because that was an accusation that came at them, often from Rome. But the reformers argued, actually, we are standing in the stream. Uh, we have, we, we have uh, birthright to the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Um, Rome does not have a monopoly on that. And so we are not trying to start a new church or be you know, rebels and revolutionaries. Rather, we are attempting to be faithful. Uh, nevertheless, because of certain innovations in the late medieval period in particular, uh, they said, we do believe that the church uh, needs to be renewed. And to do that, they of course went back to the scriptures, uh, the Bible as their final authority. Uh, but like we just talked about, they, they went back to the Bible, but they, they read the Bible with the church. Uh, and they said, this is to our advantage because when we read the Bible with the church, we find that actually the scales are tipped in our favor. And so this is one of the reasons why if you pick up a book by a reformer from the 16th century, you will discover that yes, they're quoting scripture, um, but they're also doing so in conversation with say uh, Augustine or Bernard, um, or in conversation with say Athanasius. In other words, uh, they are appealing to the church fathers and the theologians of the Middle Ages uh, in order to support uh, their case. Uh, that's important because if we fail to recognize that much, we can risk confusing the reformers with the radicals. Um, and that would be a mistake because the radicals, well, as the name you know, gives it away, doesn't it? Uh, they, they actually, well, the radicals not, not, not every single one of them, some were more extreme than others, but many of the radicals had very little patience for tradition. Uh, the reformers said, well, we are not throwing out tradition, but we want to understand it correctly. Uh, whereas the radicals, uh, they were quite intolerant of tradition in many ways, uh, which at times got them into a lot of theological, sometimes even political trouble.